So now we're getting into 2D motion. 2D uh, motion, right? Now we're going to look at vectors, vectors, all right? We weren't worried about I and J earlier because there's just 1D, rectilinear motion. Now with 2D motion, we've got to worry about left, right, up, down, I's, J's, all right? So instead of just a position as S, we're gonna have a position vector R. Uh, velocity uh, would be dr dt, acceleration dv dt, but we've got to take a derivative of a vector. So how can we take a derivative of a vector? That's how we'll, that's what we'll consider. Okay, so let's say our position vector is x, your, your x coordinate in the i plus your y coordinate in the j. Y'all do know that i is a unit vector in the x direction, j is a unit vector in the y direction. And so let's take the derivative of this vector. We have to use a product rule because we really have two things multiplied, x is multiplied times an i, I. All right, x is multiplied times an i. And so the, the, the real, the long definition, the true definition of this velocity, the derivative of this using the product rule would be dx dt times i plus x di dt, right? It's, it's the right u prime d plus uv prime, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, right? So that first term really has two terms. And then this next term, dy dt j plus y dj dt. All right, but if our axes are fixed. If we are using, which most of the times we should and we will fix our axes with vertical, horizontal, we can even rotate them, but if we fix them after we rotated them, then what happens with I's and J's if we fix our axes? that what would the derivative of i with respect to t the time rate of change it's not changing the derivative of a constant is zero right so these two terms if our axes are fixed those two terms are zero and so i really overcomplicated it didn't i the the velocity would be the derivative of our x uh position with respect to time in the i direction, plus the derivative of our y position in the j direction, All right? Uh, we could call this x dot and y dot, that dot is the derivative time, the time derivative, the time rate of change. <clears throat> and we could do this again, the acceleration would be the d squared x dt squared in the i, d squared y, dt squared in the j. All right, so I'm doing all of this to kind of show you that you can really separate, and this is how I'm going to teach it, you can separate x from y. So you can think, let me only think about the x position. Let me take the derivative, and I, I can only think about the x velocity. Let me take the derivative of the velocity in the x, and I've got the x acceleration. Okay, and so that's how I'm going to do it. All right, it's the same thing with acceleration. Uh, that this would be the acceleration in the x and the acceleration in the y. So when you have i's and j's, I like to think of these as two separate equations, your i equation and your j equation. All right, so let's say two separate equations. So you can separate x from y. All right, and so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to kind of think of this as a 1D x problem, you know? What is my x acceleration? What is my x velocity? What's my initial x position, my final x position? And then I'm gonna think about my 1d y problem. What is my y acceleration? My y velocity, my y position, 
and then you can you can kind of bring them back together at the end if necessary so i might i might if i want to find my final velocity well i'm going to do all this and i'm going to find my final x velocity i'm going to do all this i'm going to find my final y velocity and then it's a triangle a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find the final uh magnitude on the final magnitude okay <clears throat> so th this is how i'm going to think about these problems sometimes i can completely separate them sometimes i'm looking at the x and maybe i need to solve for time and i take that time into the y so so sometimes it's like two equations two unknowns um but i'm gonna separate x from y Okay, so very common, and we're all, all pretty much only going to focus on projectiles uh, for these two-dimensional problems. So projectiles, an object in air with no other forces acting on it. An object in air with no other forces acting on it. All right, so no thrust, no wind, no air resistance. It's just passively flying through the air or falling or rising. If the only force, if there are no other forces, let me say no other forces because there is a force, right? The weight. The weight is, if, if we were to draw a free body diagram of a projectile, the weight would be the only force acting and it would be straight down. So the only force acting on a projectile is the weight right or think about gravity the force due to gravity so the only acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared i'm saying negative just because nine times out of ten we're going to say up is positive <clears throat> i'm not afraid to use um english units so 32.2 feet per second squared if we're in english units all right, so how do I like to do these? I like to separate this. I'm, I'm going to have an X problem, and I'm going to have a Y problem. My X problem, so I'm going to think about the X velocity, the X position, the X acceleration. We are going to assume that the only acceleration is negative 9.81, and that's not in the X, right? It's in the Y. Uh, so my acceleration in the x is zero and there are a number of ways for you to do this how i'm going to do this i'm going to say that's a constant acceleration right it is it's constantly zero uh and so i'm going to use a any of those three constant acceleration equations and i'm going to set acceleration equal to zero uh, so it really simplifies down into ex equations that you would know right the velocity equals the change in s over time um, but I, I like to use my constant acceleration equations but set acceleration equal to zero uh, for y <clears throat> negative 9.81 meters per second squared and that is definitely constant we're going to assume we're not going to worry about terminal velocity air resistance anything like that our acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second squared or 32.2 meters per second squared Okay, I assume y'all have done these projectile problems in physics before. They're, they're the same. If you did them differently in physics, you can do them differently in this class. If you get the right answer, although it 